all year, all year long, I asked you to send me t-shirts. You know how many I got? That's right, none. But then I went to nationals and I got hooked up. Check this out, I got t-shirts from coaches, I got t-shirts from students, it was awesome. I mean, look at these threads, look at these threads. Now, those of you at home wanna make it to nationals, I'm not saying that if you don't send me a shirt, you won't make it to nationals, but you do the math. Check this out, I got blue, I got gray, I've got green, and I don't know what this is, but if I'm wearing it in the dark, you'll still be able to find me. And I also got this white right here from Team West Virginia. Now I'm wearing my Team West Virginia shirt first because, well, they were the first ones to give me a shirt, but also because they gave me this. How cool is that? My very own Mountaineer football. That's pretty awesome. In the spirit of the football, I'm gonna do two problems off of this year's state competition because I had all summer to practice. So here we go, all right, ready to get started? All right, let's go. If this one scares you, and you see all these square roots and all this mess over here, and you just put a piece of paper over it, cover that up, we'll come back to that one. We're gonna take care of this one right over here first because this one is also pretty, pretty terrifying. It asks for the smallest possible positive value, this mess right here, and we're told that A is greater than B. We're also told that A and B are integers, but there's only so much space on the board, so I didn't write that up here. Now, we could start just by finding a common denominator, right? Just get a common denominator between these two, uh, and multiply top and bottom of this by A plus B, this by, oh, that's gonna be a mess, and who wants to deal with that? So, let's just stick some numbers in and see what happens. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. At the very least, maybe we will see a pattern. Let's try three and one for A and B, and we know A is bigger than B. Three plus one is four. Three minus one is two. And so four over two plus two over four, that's just, that's pretty simple, that's just two and a half. All right, so let's try something, let's try some negative numbers. Um, we'll try, well, help A is positive, and let B be negative. Let's see what happens. Five minus one, that also is four over six. Um, five minus one, negative one, that's six over four. So we can simplify those fractions. Two thirds is four sixths, three halves is nine sixths. Add those up, you get 13 sixths. That's a little bit more than two, and it's less than this, so we're, we're doing better. Um, but still, it's not clear well, do you see anything? I mean, the only interesting thing I see is 4 over 6, 6 over 4, these are reciprocals, and 4 over 2, 2 over 4, these are reciprocals. I mean, looks like there's a pattern. If we look back up here, A plus B over A minus B, A minus B over A plus B, they're reciprocals. This is just that flipped over. So every number we get out of this is going to look like this. It's going to be some number plus its reciprocal. And we know that the sum number is going to be, well, we want a positive number. Because, you know, if you just take a number and flip it over, they're going to have the same sign. So if we need to have a positive result at the end, we've got to have both of these to be positive. So all the numbers we get out of this are going to look like C plus 1 over C. Hmm. So let's just think about this instead, because it's simpler, and we, we like simpler, and we like simpler a lot. And how can we make this as small as possible and, and still positive? Well, if we stick in one for C, and we know we can get one out of this. If, you know, if B is just zero, you're gonna get one plus one, you're gonna get one plus one over one, and that's gonna give you a two. I just stick one in for C, and well, these are both higher than two, and let's see, can we do better than two? Can we get something smaller than two? No. Now let's move on to this problem right over here. What? Oh, <laughs> you wanna know why we can't? do better than two? Good question, good question. Uh, well, let's see what would happen. Let's imagine that it's true. Imagine that we can never get smaller than two if C is, is positive. Uh, well, if, that, if that's true, let's see, let's go backwards a step. Let's combine these fractions. Get a common denominator, this is C squared over C. C squared plus one over C is greater than or equal to two, and that's what we think is true. We're not sure yet. We're not sure if this is true. If, now, because C is positive, we can get rid of the fraction here, and we, we like getting rid of fractions. We can multiply both sides by C, and we'll have C squared plus one is greater than or equal to two C. Now I can bring the two C over to this side so we can compare things to zero, because comparing things to zero is a lot easier 
than comparing to other things. And look at that. Now, if you did the activity sheet, did you do the activity sheet? Go check it out right on the Math Count site. If you did the activity sheet, you recognize this and you say, aha. Go ahead, say it. Aha. Just like that. This is a perfect square. This is C minus 1 squared. And we know that perfect squares are greater than or equal to 0. So now we see why this is true. We start from the fact that this perfect square is greater than or equal to 0. We multiply it all out. We add the 2C to both sides. And then because C is positive, we can divide by both sides without worrying about changing the direction of inequality. And we get this right here, C squared plus 1 over C, squared and equal to 2. Break that into two fractions, and right there we have it. We've shown that this is always greater than or equal to 2. And we've also already seen that we can get 2, so our smallest possible positive value is indeed 2. So, let's see. Now we have to deal with that. What does that even mean? Let's take the square root of, you have a number, and then you add it to its square root, but you add another number, and you, uh, what does this mean? And you do it forever? I mean, I guess what this dot, dot, dot means, you just keep going on forever. You know, you start with this x, you add in this, but yeah. This is confusing. Well, we at least, I mean, we have a big square root there. We know what to do with square roots, right? We know, we know exactly what to do with square roots. You square it, because that makes the square roots go away. So if we square both sides of this, the square root goes away. And we have x plus, oh, only one of the square roots goes away. All this stuff is in here. So, one square root down, infinity to go. Oh no, that's bad. Uh, well, we at least know what to do when we square five, we get 25, that's pretty easy. And now, we've taken a complicated problem and turned it into a more complicated problem. I thought we were trying to make things simpler. I mean, if we just, we could move the x over there and square again, and move x, square again, and square again, and square again, and, well, we know where that's going to end. Nowhere. Infinitely many square roots will have to square infinitely many times. It'll never end. Wow, what do we do? What are we going to do about this mess right here? We know what this mess is. This mess, this mess right here, that's just, it's just five. We just got this same thing back here. We squared that, we got this. This is just x plus the mess that we started with. The mess that we started with is 5. So we have x plus 5 is 25. So x is 20. And we're done. Yeah, it's pretty fishy, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 I didn't quite buy this the first time I thought of that. Didn't buy it at all. So you know how you check this out, right? You're not, you're not sure this is it's really, it's really kosher. Does this really work? Let me just pull out a calculator and check it out. We're going to take 20. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and do this. Do this with our calculator and see what happens. So we'll start off, let's see, we'll start off the square root of 20. That's 4.47. Then we'll add 20. 24.47. And we'll take the square root of that. And we get 4.9469. Right. Okay, that's a little less than 5. It's not, it's not 5. We want, to get, we want to get 5. So let's see, we'll add 20. Give them a number that's a little bit less than 25, take the square root of that, and we get 4.99469. Still not 5, but close to 5. And when we add 20 to something that's close to 5, we get something that's, well, it's close to 25. So when we take the square root of that, 4.999469, we get something that's close to 5. That makes sense. You know, start with something that's close to 5, add 20, you get something that's close to 25, take the square root of that, you get something that's close to 5 again. Let's see, when are we going to get 5? Let's see, let's just keep doing this. Add 20, take the square root, 4.9999469, still not 5. Add 20, take the square root, 4.9999469, still not 5. Add 20, take the square root, 4.99999, this is going to take forever.